I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well today I'd like to talk about pregnancy and for those that are trying to get pregnant or have a baby. So many times people ask me when will I have children or if I will have children and even how many children will I have. This is a very important question and I feel like it can be very clearly seen in the chart. The very first thing that you must look at in accordance to whether or not someone has the capacity to have children, if they will, is you must look at planet Jupiter. Jupiter is the karaka for children. When I say karaka, I mean indicator of. So if Jupiter is in a strong sign, this can be good for children. And when I say a strong sign, it means it should be in the sign that it rules or the sign that it's exalted in, which means Jupiter in either Sagittarius and, and then Cancer is its exaltation sign, Sagittarius and Pisces. So those three signs are very, very strong because it rules Sagittarius and Pisces, but exalted in Cancer. Love that when I see Jupiter in those signs. But it can also be in the sign of a friend. And so the signs that it's good, it's good in, aside from the best signs it's in, could be either the water signs, which are Scorpio, of course, Cancer it's exalted in, and um, the other water sign, which is Pisces. So I've already named those. But remember that it must be in a good sign. So those are the signs that are premier and fire signs Jupiter does well in as well. So it could be in Aries, of course, I've named Sagittarius or Leo. Those are the signs that Jupiter prospers in, in accordance for children. Now, after you've checked out how Jupiter is in the birth chart, next look at where it goes in the Navamsha chart. And if you want to take it to the next, level, go to the Saptumsha chart, which is the D7 chart, the divisional chart that is the division for children. But I find it's much more specific in the birth chart and in the Navamsha, the D9 chart. And what I'm saying is you're going to be looking at the sign placements. So as Jupiter stays in a powerful sign throughout all of the divisional charts, you're going to see that it has strength and that will show up probably in the Shad Bala points, which in a computer program, you can see the strength or the weakness of Jupiter based on this. But most importantly, check out what sign it's in, in the birth chart, then the Navamsha chart. The next thing I want you to look at is what house does Jupiter go to? Is it in a powerful, strong house? Meaning, is it in a triconal house or an angular house? That is very good. So the angular houses are, which we also call them Kendras, 1, 4, 7, and 10. And the triconal houses are 1, 5, and 9. But they say when you put the karaka for something in the house that it represents, such as the fifth house is the house of children, Jupiter in the fifth is some not, sometimes not so good for having children. It's too much energy there. It's just, you know, a too much is too much and it can cancel it out sometimes. So don't jump to a conclusion when you see Jupiter in the fifth house. Now I have seen people with Jupiter in the fifth house have many children, but many times have seen them not have children. So that's not the determining point. But make sure Jupiter is strong. That's the most important thing. Next, after you've checked it out in the birth chart and then a bumsha, Look at Chandra Lagna. What do I mean by that? Make the moon the ascendant and follow through with all of the rules I just said. What houses is Jupiter in from the moon is very powerful in terms of determining children. So when will somebody have children? 
that will determine by the transit of Jupiter. Is Jupiter aspecting the fifth house? That means Jupiter is in the 11th. It's aspecting the fifth by opposition. This can mean, and I'm talking about the transit, so transiting Jupiter in the 11th or transiting Jupiter in the first, in the fifth, or the ninth. In this respect, it's all those positions, one, five, and nine, it's aspecting the fifth house. So the transit of Jupiter in the fifth house is exceptional for bringing on a pregnancy, okay? Remember I was talking before about its natal position, but when you see when someone will, be, will become pregnant, you want Jupiter to be aspecting the fifth house, okay? Now, another thing. When you're looking at the prospects back to the natal chart of if someone will have children, you do not want Jupiter in the eighth house. This is a difficult house and represents endings or the 12th house. So it's natal position in the eighth or the 12th is very difficult for having children. But that's just one thing. What you're going to look at is the accumulation of many things together in terms of the buildup, whether or not you can assess that people will have children. So the next thing you've looked at, does do malefic planets conjunct Jupiter or aspect Jupiter? And one of the most difficult aspects is when Rahu aspects Jupiter because Rahu represents separation. So Rahu's aspect to Jupiter is even worse than Ketu's aspect to Jupiter and can represent loss around children. So that's one deterrent. That could mean it's conjunct Jupiter or that Rahu is in trinal aspect to Jupiter, which means it's either five placements from Jupiter or nine placements counting from natal Jupiter. I'm talking about natal Rahu. So natal position of Jupiter and natal position of Rahu. You do not want Rahu aspecting Jupiter. Now, another thing is, after you look at, look at the placement of Jupiter and whether or not malefics are aspecting natal Jupiter, in the natal chart, I'm talking natal to natal, so we're looking at malefics such as Rahu being number one, the worst, or even K2. Next can be any malefic, Sun, Mars, or Saturn. Aspect to Jupiter will weaken it for having children. It's not everything, but it just weakens it. Another thing is, what is aspecting the fifth house of children? The more malefics that aspect the fifth, the less chance of having children. So what I'm seeing is if you have Rahu, Rahu K2, or if you have Saturn, Mars, or Sun aspecting the fifth house, this can de detract from the opportunities to have children and whether someone is able to conceive or become pregnant. In other words, they're, they're just how, how they are able to uh, reproduce, okay? Now, one more thing that I find very important, and there's other things, but one more thing is check out, now like, like I said, you've checked out to see how many malefics. If you have two or more malefics aspecting the fifth house, this is not easy for the person to have children. Plus, if you have the ruler of the fifth house, which is the house of children, if you have the ruler of the fifth going to a difficult house, this is another deterrent. So if you have the ruler of the fifth house in the eighth or the twelfth house, it is not good. Okay. And one more thing, when you look at the twelfth house, when you see many malefics in the 12th house or many planets in the 12th house, particularly the ruler of the fifth as well, in the 12th house, this is very hard for having children because the 12th house is the eighth from the fifth. So counting from the fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, 10, 11, 12. The eighth from the fifth, this can be loss of children. 
And it doesn't necessarily mean death, but it can mean maybe through marriage, there's divorce and separation from your kids. This is tough because the 12th house is the eighth from the fifth. So all of these variables, checking out how Jupiter is, either in the birth chart and the, the natal planets aspect to it, what house it's in, then checking that all out from Chandra Lagna from the moon. How is, how, how are planets fifth from the moon? How are, how is the chart? What's going on fifth from the moon? Then you look at the ruler of the fifth house. Where is it going in the chart? How is it placed? This will tell you more about children. And how many planets, benefics particularly, are aspecting the fifth house? This can tell you how many kids there are. So if we have Jupiter and Venus aspecting the fifth, or even the sun, but planets in the fifth house will tell you, give you clues as to how many children. And in accordance to figuring out the sex of the child, you wanna to look to see if the planet that rules the fifth house or the sign that's on the fifth house is a male or female sign. What is a male or female sign? The male signs are going to be air and fire the female signs are earth and water. So if this, that's one clue. And then the planets that are relative to being male or female planets will give another clue additionally to better understand what the sex will be. And if the sun is in the fifth house, this usually denotes a male child, not always. The moon in the fifth house can usually denote a female child. But if the moon is in a male sign, it may not be a female. If the sun in the fifth house is in a female sign, it may not be a boy. But if you have this congruency of male and female, whether the, the planet is male or female, whether the sign is male and female, that is how you're going to determine the sex. Plus, last but not least, always remember to look from Chandra Lagna. What is fifth from the moon? And these are all the variables that I have to take in instantaneously in my mind when somebody asks me, will I have children? And how many will I have? And what do you think, girl or a boy? All of this stuff has to immediately click in to give that assessment. So with that, I'd like to close. If you would like to learn more about Vedic astrology, you can go to my university, which is universityofvedicastrology.com, or if you would like a reading and like more information about me, go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. Thank you.